So the question was, she said, you know, last night you were talking about free will and karma and destiny and all of that, and, and we talk about source and the one. How did, how did it separate anyway? I mean, how did that one become so many anyway? This is the stuff that scriptures literally are made of. But for me, what's, what's really important about being in here personally in satsang is I don't want to share just, well, I read this. Because you can all go out and read. I want to share that which, for me, I've actually experienced or that has, has touched me. And on that level, because I've asked the question a lot, I've heard the question asked a lot, and really on that level, the clearest, clearest answer that has touched me, that feels right inside, as funny as it sounds, is just because. But just because here, so there's, there's two, two schools, or two, many schools, but for the purpose of our three-minute answer, we're going to call them two schools, of spiritual thought. Advaita, which is non-dual. It's the there is nothing but God. All of this is an illusion. Everything is an illusion except God. And then you have your dualistic schools, which tend to be the more bhakti-filled schools, the schools of devotion, the schools that say you are the worshiper of God, the schools that give you a lover and a beloved. Okay. People in the bhakti yoga field really the enlightened ones, the deep ones, if you talk to them deeply, they know it's all God. They know. They've experienced their beloved inside themselves just as much as they've experienced their beloved outside. They know. But being in love feels so good. And yes, it's all God. And yes, loving God feels so good. And it's very hard to live constantly in the place of awareness of it's all God. This is, this is maya. This is, you know, the samsara, whatever words we use, whether we speak about it as the illusion or we speak about it as this material world, you know, the, it pulls us, it grabs us. We start to think that, you know, getting to, getting to our manicure on time is really important. That, you know, what brand of cereal we buy is really important. We get, we get caught up in things. And going back to the awareness of it's all God, is a, is a place that even though we hold it in our highest awareness, is a place that's actually very, very difficult to live from. Not just intellectually, you can chant it all you want, but really to live from it, like, hmm, my house burned down, okay, it's all God. My family died, okay, it's all God. That's a, that's a hard place to live from. Another place to live from is there is God and we love God. And that God lives in all of us, that God has created all of us, not just out of clay that's separate from him or her or it, but out of the divine. We've been created out of the divine, not just by the divine. And so who we are is divine, yes. And yes, 
there is a body. And the brain is part of the body. All that gray matter and white matter, when I speak about body, it's, it includes the brain. The brain is the medium through which we experience our mind. I know that's complex and we don't have time to go into too much of it there, but just we've spoken about it a lot before. The brain is the medium through which we experience the mind, through which we experience our consciousness. It's not the mind, it's not consciousness. It's a physical network, but it's the medium through which we experience it. And to be aware that that's also true. Because if I'm aware that that's also true, then I'm able to be a much more active participant in my life. If it's all God, then why bother? I mean, really? Hunger, poverty, despair, suffering, why bother? It's all God. And yes, at the highest, deepest level we know, get back far enough from this picture you're going to see, it's all God. And here we are, having a human experience. And isn't it beautiful? And we cry, and we love, and we care, and we connect, and we watch sunsets, and we put our hands in the dirt. And it's beautiful. And from, from that perspective, the why did, did God separate? was to experience the re-coming back together. To experience that love. Because it's so beautiful. And it feels so good. And yeah, of course, the, the esoteric question, you know, the highest question is, well, really? Like, God needs to feel something? Well, okay, again, on the highest level, it's all God. No, God doesn't need to feel anything. And... Yeah, the coming together is so beautiful. The love is so beautiful that even God, even God created this entire drama because that, that explanation also answers not just why did he create all of us, but why did he create all of us who were then going to forget that we were part of God and go through this nonsense of thinking we are the body and suffering and having to come back. I mean, isn't it really just an unnecessary exercise? But anybody who's ever been in a relationship knows how beautiful the making up is after a fight. Right? I mean... Yeah, you were together before the fight. But there's something, there's something fresh. There's something deeper. There's something closer. There's something more alive about the way that we come back together, whether it's been a fight, you've been in the same home, whether it's been a physical separation. A few hours, a few days, a few weeks. Whatever it may be, there's something very beautiful about a coming back together, even when you were always together anyway. And so for me, in my, in my experience of loving God and coming back to God, I mean, I know it feels so good to me, and I love the idea that it feels so good to God also. So for me, that's, that's the reason that works best.